Our text is not saying that the reward of the peacemakers is that God himself will become the father and God of the peacemakers. It's not what it's saying. But that the peacemakers will be known or recognized as children of God. Not that God will become their father, but that they are recognized as children of God. The text shows that the change of mind or the recognition or the realization that will take place is on man's part, not on God's part. Hallelujah. The recognition is not something that God will come to realize, but it's something that the world will come to realize. God knows that we are his children from the point of conversion. The moment you get saved, the moment I accepted Jesus in 1977, I became a child of God. But the recognition by God is a progressive recognition. It starts at conversion, but it progresses. It's progressive. It grows. Look at what the Bible says in John 1 and 12. It says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Bible says he came to his own and his own received him not, but to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Romans 10, 9 through 11 says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart right. that God has raised him from the dead, Amen. thou shalt be saved. Amen. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth a confession is made unto salvation. And then verse 11 says this, for the scripture, for the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be made ashamed of him. If you believe on Jesus, you won't be made, you won't be ashamed to confess Jesus. Amen. Christians who are Christians and nobody know that they are Christians aren't Christians. God has, Brother Deacon, no secret service. No secret servants. All of the servants of the Lord say so. All of the servants of the Lord make it known that they belong to Jesus. And they don't just make it known at church. They don't just make, it, make this known uh, around family and familiar ones. Everywhere they go. Everywhere they are, even if they're in town on business and they don't, they won't be there for long. If they make a connection with anyone somewhere along the way, they want someone to know that they've been washed in the blood of the lamb. Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. That is, he will not be ashamed to confess publicly. The Christ 
in whom he trusts. He who believes in his heart will not be ashamed to confess with his mouth publicly. He shall never be ashamed of his hope in Christ. He shall never have cause to regret his confidence in reposing such a trust in the Lord Jesus. I repose, I rest my trust in him. And I do this with confidence and I'm not ashamed because I have confessed with my mouth and I believe in my heart. See, there, there, there are steps to getting saved. You got to believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. Got to believe this in your heart. But you can't believe it in your heart and not confess it with your mouth. Praise the Lord. It's got to be talked about. Praise the Lord. This, this right here, what I'm saying right now will let you know whether you're saved or not. Well, Pastor, you know, I don't talk about religion. I'm not talking about religion either. I'm talking about a relationship with Jesus Christ. Bless you, man. Good to see you today. If you have this relationship with Christ, it is a relationship that you can't keep to yourself. And the, the longer you're in it, the more you talk about it, the more you confess it. Again, the progressive nature of, of salvation or of being in the family of God. Jesus said this in John's gospel, chapter 8. Verse 31 through 32, and it'll come together in a moment. Jesus says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. He speaks of, in verse 31, being disciples indeed. Disciples indeed literally means disciples for real. Hallelujah. You, if you continue, then you are really my disciples. All of this, uh, if the disciple continues in Christ's word. Notice if you read John 8 and 31, he was talking to Jews who had believed on him. Talk about the progressive nature. They had believed. And he said to the Jews who had believed. That is, they were saved already. It says, if you continue in my word, then you will become real disciples of mine. You will be our disciples indeed. Our Lord said to his Jewish apprentice at the beginner's or uh, the beginnings of their grace. If you consider covenanting with me, have not thoughts of revocation. Don't think of going back. If coveting with me is on your mind, forget any thought of revoking that covenant. Praise the Lord. It's progressive. If you abandon uh, the uh, thoughts of revocation, then you will truly be my disciples. Second Peter 3.18 says, Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Again, notice the rewards of continuance in Christ. He says in John 8 and 32, you shall know the truth. Look at this. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Those of us who have been walking with the Lord are not confused by the times in which we live. These are crazy days, but they're not unsettling days. They don't confuse us. That the state of Vermont would vote in office a transgender person. 
that that many people would cast a vote for a man who thinks he's a woman to be their political leader oh tells you something but to the saint who have continued in God's word it doesn't confuse us God bless you brother Desmond it doesn't confuse us or throw us off because we've been out here for a long time have studied the Bible and know what the scriptures have to say about the behavior of the last days. Some things you can't know unless you continue on in God. And then the culmination of our walk in Christ in terms of the progressiveness, the progressive nature of salvation is found in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 through 2 says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now, right now, are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know, because we followed on to know. We've continued in his word. We know. What, what is it uh, that uh, we know? We know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. There are certain things that the believer who have followed the Lord know. We know through years of hanging in here. No, through years of uh, not uh, taking back our commitment to Christ. We know that he is our keeper. And we know that when he shall come, we will be like him. The greatest award that can come to any man is to be called or recognized as a child of God. The Bible says in Romans 8, 16 through 17, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. When you serve the Lord long enough, the Holy Ghost will bear with your spirit. And it will let you know that you are the Lord's child. Regardless of what life may be throwing your way, the spirit of the Lord, especially in times of trouble, nudges up and says, don't worry, I got you. You are my child. You, you're, you're in my family. And then when, when the Lord convinces us uh, that we're his children, and then we realize, then, then we're his heirs. Praise the Lord. An heir is someone who stands to inherit something. Children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. And if we suffer with him, God Almighty, we will be glorified together. When the Lord enters into his glory, I'll be there. These are saying the song, don't call the roll until I get there. Then another song says, when the roll is called in heaven, I'll be there. Either way, praise the Lord. If we suffer with him, here's what we know as believers. When he is glorified. Don't worry about what people say down here. What they think they can say or think what they want. That's why they have mouths. And why they have brain. But when he is glorified, we would be glorified with him. I would rather today have the recognition uh, as a child of God than to be a member of any, praise the Lord, sports team, any clubhouse, any prestigious organization, any sorority, any fraternity, or, or the like. Anything that man has to offer, I would rather be called God's child. 
Being called the child of God beats being recognized as an NFL, NBA, or Major League Baseball Hall of Famer. Amen. Glory to God. Child of God trumps member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, they talk about all of the accomplishments that uh, the late Aretha Franklin made in her life. First woman to be inducted in the hall. Second black woman to make the cover of Time magazine. Took Otis Redding's song, Respect, and made it a super hit. I didn't like it until I uh, learned that Otis wrote it because I didn't like the language. I wouldn't want to be a man in a relationship where my wife come home and tell me, your kisses may be sweeter than honey, but guess what? So is my money. All I want when I get home is a little respect. What kind of man want to be talked to like that? You, you, you in bad shape, brother. You missed the boat. But then I found out that it was Otis. It, it, it was a man talking to a woman, see. Now it made a little more sense. Y'all don't know what to do with me, do you? But I'm telling you the truth. You know I'm telling the truth. Say amen. But I hope that she got saved. I, I hope, you know, they said, you know, Aretha never really left gospel. Well, if she didn't leave gospel, you can't leave gospel. If, if she didn't leave, there's no such thing as leaving. It's not possible. Yes, she left. But I hope, my prayer is that she got right because the only thing that matters now is, is, is what she did for Christ. Christ don't count Grammys. Christ pays no attention to Hall of Fame jacket. Christ pays no attention to Scion Awards who held the home run record. No, he want to know what did we do for him? Can I get a witness? Amen. Remember, we don't sing it anymore. Remember, only what you do for Christ will last. We can do a lot of things, but if you haven't done those things for the Lord, then you're in trouble. I'd rather know Jesus. I'd rather be called a child of God. That's the greatest accolade that can be given to a believer. Look at this. See, when you come out, you can't look back. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13 through 16 says this. These all, here's, here's, the, here's the group I want to join, the hall of faith of Hebrews chapter 11 says, these all died in faith. And, and when they died, check this out, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers. You know, strangers are people who are treated with suspicions. And pilgrims, pilgrims were exiles, said that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. You know, as saints today, we're not trying to be strangers and pilgrims. We're trying to blend in. But, but when you grab these promises and you're persuaded by them, then you embrace them, and uh, it may make you a stranger or, or a pilgrim, but you want those promises. Look at this. For, for they that say such things, that is, they who declare to be strangers and pilgrims on this earth, on this earth but embrace the promises of God, they which say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. You see, too many of us have our minds still back in what God brought us out of. When the Lord brings you out, you got to forget that. That was then. 
and this is now. I'm on the Lord's highway. See, let me tell you something, grown man. You got to release certain things. You, you're not a high school player anymore. You, you're grown. You got a family. Paul says, when I was a child, I thought as a child. I understood as a child. I behaved like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Some of us hadn't grown up yet. Certain things happen. You're not praying for me. Certain things happen when you become a man. Certain things happen when you grow up. When you grow up in God, you give up certain things. When you grow up, you grow out of certain things. When you, when you first got saved, maybe you still str struggled with drinking. Maybe you still struggled with smoking, struggled with cursing, struggled with immorality. But as you grow, praise the Lord, 15 years later, there will not be a pack of Pamels somewhere still in your house. Or not be beer in your refrigerator. Because see, you're not growing. Some, some things you ought to grow out of. And, 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 and ask God to take from your mind. See, amen. And what he did was he replaced that thought and that desire with something else. And I, I decided that I wanted the things that God has for me rather than trying to hold on to what the Lord has brought me out of. Matter of fact, the question is, why are you trying to hold on to what God has brought you out of anyway? What's the point in trying to hold on to it? Praise the Lord. What's the point? I, 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 I'm amazed when I watch grown men disappear from church during football season. Watching a game. I'd be ashamed for a game to have that much influence over me. I'd be ashamed. I'd be ashamed. I wouldn't show my face in public for any game to have that kind of pull and power on me. Praise the Lord. Uh, now, that was a time when I lived for the game. That was a time when I wanted to be like the men who played the game. But I was in high school. I was in college. I didn't make the pros. So, uh, they, they, hey, coach, they didn't take me. So, ain't no point in me daydreaming and, and chasing no pipe dream. No, sir. Uh, I didn't make it. But that don't mean I can't make it in something. I, will, I think too much of myself to be looking back, talking about, yeah, I wish it was me, window shopping, watching a game. No, God put something else on my mind. And uh, I'm more mindful of what he has on my mind today, cousin, as a grown man. Thank you, Jesus. Growing in Christ, then looking back in the world. It's time to give up that stuff. It's time to give up that stuff. Stop. You, you listen. Listen. Praise the Lord. You'll, be, you'll do better without that smartphone if you're using all your apps to go to the porno sites. You, 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 you go, praise the Lord. You'll be better off without it. You'll be better off. Because, see, in order to stay out of the world, we've got to let the Lord put something else on our mind. Some of us are just too mindful of the world. The Bible says the reason they uh, didn't go back is because they were not mindful. But look at this. But now they desire a better country. I want you to know that what the Lord has for us is better than what we've left behind. What Jesus has for you tomorrow is better than what the devil had for you yesterday. Now you, you ought to want what God has for you. But they desire a better country. And that is a heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he hath prepared, good God, for them a city. There's a city made for the child of God. There's a place prepared for the child of God. Notice the emphasis on the progression of this thing. The longer you stay in it, the more you ought to want it. The longer we stay saved, the sweeter we ought to grow. Good God Almighty, the nicer we ought to become. And this is why this is uh, uh, this is why the peacemakers are so important. Peacemakers are those who take that peace, that frame of mind that God has given them, and they give that same frame of mind, that peace, to those who do not have it. 
Good God Almighty. This is why we as believers must be peacemakers. Now the question is, uh, why, praise the Lord, uh, what does this have to do with peacemakers? And wh why are you connecting family likeness and peacemakers to this progressive uh, salvation? I'm glad you asked that question because there is an answer. The answer is growth produces progressive, uh, a progressive increase in likeness. The more you grow, the more you ought to look like God. Hallelujah, Jesus. I got a question for you. Uh, since you asked me one, let me ask you one. When does a child look most like his parents? At birth or later on in life? Truth is, at birth, they got to put a name tag on them. They got, got to tell you what the child name is because all of them laying there look alike. But as time go on, could God Almighty genes kick in and begin to look just like your mom and daddy? Well, as time go on, people ought to be able to look at us and say, that person looks just like Jesus. They look just like a child of God. They look just like, hallelujah, a son of God. And see, we, we got to live in a manner where the world will look at us. The unsaved will look at us and say they look just like the daddy. They look just like Jesus. And this is why tonight, today, I'm not a Ashamed to be a part of holiness. I'm not ashamed to be a part of the church of God in Christ because I want the world to know that we are holy and we are sanctified and we're not trying to look like anyone else. No, this is not the Grammy Awards. No, this is not the world. No, this is not a nightclub. This is a church. Turn the lights on, light up the building, show the cross, give me a real pulpit, give me a real podium, give me an amen corner, let's cry loud and spare not because we are children of God. And as I look around, I see the family resemblance. As I look around, I see folk who look holy, who wave their hands like they're holy, who shake their heads like they're holy, who shout like they're holy. I've noticed some of you, the way you have behaved through the peacemaker message. You've been going up to folk and saying, I'm sorry. You've been making up. You've been healing your relationship. Well, that looks just like God. And when people see that kind of stuff, they look over at you and they call you a child of God. How many children of God do we have in here today? Yeah! Yes, Lord. Somebody lift your hands and just begin to praise him and say, Lord, make me a child of the king. Say, yeah. yes, give him praise in the building. Thank you, Jesus. Our time is coming to a close, but the world needs to see the glory of Jesus in every one of us, spreading God's peace, standing for the Lord, praying for one another, forgiving one another, turning the other cheek, obeying the Lord. That's what being a peacemaker, a child of God looks like. A child of God is somebody who when they go through the storm and the rain, they declare with a broken heart, I know my Redeemer liveth and I know that if I hold on the Lord you bring me out. Do I have any children of the Lord in here? Do I have anybody who has a shout? Even though you're under attack, the devil is trying to tell you that you just ain't gonna make it. But when you know that you are a child of God and you're around the lost, you're around sinners, 
You don't let sinners hear you talk doubt. You don't let sinners hear you criticize the church. You don't let sinners hear you criticize the Lord. David was down and out and he almost gave up and he said to himself, surely I got saved for nothing. Surely I cleansed my heart in innocence for nothing. But then he said, if I say this, I might disturb God's children. So I can't speak it. I can't say it. I got to go go through, keep a smile on my face, and just believe that somehow, some way, the Lord, oh, the Lord will make a way. Somebody shout yeah, shout yeah. Oh, Lord, give him praise in the room. I want to hear the children of God. Praise the Lord. Children, praise the Lord. Live it when you leave here. Live it at the grocery store. Live it at the mall. Live it at the convenience store. Live it at the hospital. Live it the funeral home, live it when you're up, when you're down, spread the love of Jesus, spread the peace of the Lord, spread it everywhere, spread it all over the world, tell them that on a hill, far away, oh, stood it all. Somebody praise him in this room tonight. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good God Almighty. I want the peacemakers to praise him, to give him glory, to give him glory, to give him glory, to give him glory. They may not like us at the abortion clinic, but they know that we're children of God. They may not like you in the LBGTQ community, but they know that we're children of God. The world don't like the saints. The world loves its own, but they know that we're children of God. And in my clothes, I'm so glad to be a child of God. I'm so glad to be saved. I'm glad that I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, I'm glad that I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm glad that I have a whole of faith jacket. I've been admitted one of these days they're going to put me in God's hall of faith. And I pray that if they say nothing else, they just say he endured until the end, that he stood through the storm and rain, that he cried loud and spared not. I know today that somebody here who's going through something, but God told me to tell you that today is your day. And he gave me advice to give to you. Just be a child of God. Just stay saved. Just be a peacemaker. Just spread the word. And he will. He'll make everything all right. He will. He'll open doors for you. He will. Yes. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. I know he will. He's done it for me so many times. Can I get a witness? Have you ever been down? for the count and the devil says I got you now didn't God deliver you didn't the Lord step through didn't the Lord bring you out yeah oh oh Lord oh Lord oh Lord look at your neighbor
paper. You look them up and down. You determine whether or not you can see it. Oh, Lord. Where's your son? Go get him for me right quick. Oh, Lord. Ooh, Jesus. Look at him. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. Little family resemblance. Look at that boy. Look at him. Look at his daddy. Look at his daddy. Stand right there, daddy. Look at his son. Look at him. Dad, walk over there. Hallelujah. Stop right there. Son, walk over there. Ah, walk like his daddy. Look at his, his complexion. The color of your daddy. Look at that smile. They start to smile at the same time. I see the family resemblance. Ah! Oh, oh, Lord, there's somebody in here who looks like Jesus, who walks like Jesus. You act like a saint. You shout like a saint. You wave your hands like a saint of God. I'm glad to be in the family. Yeah. Yeah! Woo. You look like you belong. Yeah, you look like. There's a certain way that a child of God goes through. Certain family traits. Some families, everybody got a big, got a big head. Some of them have a big nose. Various things that give them away. Thank you, Jesus. I have traits. There are things that give, give me away. There are things that reveal that I'm in God's family. I'm in the Lord's house. I'm washed in the blood of the Lamb. I'm saved like the Bible said. You can't go through cussing. That doesn't resemble. The family, praise all everybody in the family, owe it to the family behave a, uh, to behave a certain way. You're in that family and you've been raised right? What are you doing? What are you doing? Well, I just, I just decided that I'm gonna charter my own course. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Raised holy and you out there in the club. Raised to be clean and you on drugs. Raised to be straight. You show up with a woman, uh, come home from college, and, and here she come, Susie bringing home her college roommate who now is her lover, and you've been raised. You've been raised to know better. Out there whoring around, and you were raised to be righteous. Something in you. There's something in you that should make you want to uphold the family name. Uphold. Right. Uphold God's, God's uh, standards. The standards of the church. Uphold that stuff. You know who we are. I called the preacher the other day about a guy who is very questionable. And I told him that the guy reached out to me. I said, I have reservations. I talked to him yesterday. What should I do? He said, well, one thing is for certain. He knows what you stand for and knows what you preach. He knew all those things before he called you. So it could be that he's looking for help. 
I said, all right, I'll call. But I needed some counsel on what I should or should not do. Somebody said, well, why would you need counsel on that? Because it's what I'm not telling you. Amen. 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 But I needed, I needed wisdom from uh, uh, someone who could give me sage advice. And uh, you, had, you had to be qualified. Amen. And so, so, when you are in the family, when the way is established, everybody owes it, every family member, owe it to the rest of the family member to behave in those righteous ways that reflect the family. Amen. Because see, you don't want to resemble the family. And then behave like you're not in the family. There is an established way, an established protocol that was set up before we met you, before you came, that God put in place. See, everything can't be rewritten. I'm, I'm going to do this my way. I'm going to put my own twist. No, 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 no. The rules for the family of God were established before any of us got saved. So once you join the family, then he wants us to behave as though we're part of the family. So we grow. We progress. We come up. We understand the weight and the responsibility that God have placed upon us. The Lord didn't call me to preach. God didn't make me a pastor. God didn't make me a bishop for me to be a, a different kind or a new kind. God didn't raise me up to rewrite the books because that is a tradition that predates me, made up of men who perhaps are greater than I will ever be. I stand on their shoulders and the Lord didn't put me in it to take it in a whole different direction that's against the scripture. No, he raised me up to continue the pattern. So we, we're going to have us a new kind of Christianity. There ain't no new kind. Bible said if they come to you preaching any other gospel than that which I have preached to you, Paul said let them be a curse. There is no new kind. There's no, there's no new way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Family resemblance. Reason, he, he said, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God not become children of God, is that you have to be a child of God to be a peacemaker in the first place. To spread the peace of Christ, you have to have the peace of Christ. But as the world see us spreading God's peace, then people recognize that we are part of the most prestigious group in existence the most powerful, and the only one that will matter in the end. I was watching the uh, NFL Hall of Fame inductees and watching as they were so proud. And I, I thought it was a proud moment. But I said to myself, Lord, I don't envy any of them. I love being a part of the Lord's work. I love being a part of God's team. And you can be, because some of those guys who were uh, inducted named the name of Christ. I'm not saying they're mutually exclusive. I'm saying to be in the NFL Hall of Fame, you can't be a Christian because there are many Christians. But what I'm saying is the greatest group to be a part of, greatest family, the one that should matter to you the most is to be a child of God a son of the Lord. Amen. And everything that comes your way, everything that is offered to you, you ought to ask yourself, 
when it is presented, will this cause me to look distorted as a child of God? When you put things on, does this interfere with folk recognizing me as a child of God? Where you go, who you hang out with, who you're seen in public with, will this interfere with my being called a child of God? Because I want to be called a child of God. More than anything else, I want to be called a child of God. There's a store that was opened the other day uh, in a location. I won't tell you where it is because I don't, I don't want to give it any advertisement. But in this store, the commercials that they run, they run commercials of men, and they are redefining masculinity. And their new definition of masculinity is effeminate men. Oh, 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 sissified, girly, girly men. That's the new masculinity. And they call regular guys, says that we, are, we represent toxic masculinity. But the new guys that look like girls and transgenders and all that, they are the new masculinity. Well, the store opened the other day. And uh, uh, in my mind, I said, you know, I, I wouldn't be caught dead. I know that's right. That's right. Shopping in there. That's right. Walking, walking by the door. Somebody might take a picture. <laughs> I'm across the street and go around. Now, Wooden, why are you making, don't you think that's a little much? They were the ones that says, here's how we want to market it. Here's what we want to do. All of our colors are homos, uh, represent the homosexual community, and we cater to men who are like that. Well, that says to me that they are not catering to the sons of God. So the question becomes, uh, Elder, what were you in that behind? Well, right. Before I move you, because I'm going to move you, because you represent us. Why, why are you in there when they don't even market to you? Why would you go to a place that don't even market to you? And then you walk in there, what do they have that's worth throwing that kind of spurge on the name of Jesus? And you known in the community as a child of God. Why would you do that to the name of the Lord? See, you got to love God. You got to love God. You got to love God more than you love being fashionable. People thought I was trying to be deep. I wasn't. I was just uh, living my own convictions. And I have those convictions today. The prettiest fragrance, the one that I, up until that time, that I liked more than any that I had ever experienced or smelled was Calvin Klein's CK1 at that time. My problem was not the maker of CK1, but he said that it was made for male and female. I don't wear both. I wear, I wear male socks. 
right. Male t-shirt. That's right, Bishop. Uh, male suit. Right. Male tie. Yeah. Male. 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 Yes. Male. Yes. Male. You know why? Because I'm a child of God. That's right. Male fragrance. Now, now they might get me with the fragrance, but they can't tell me. Because if, if they tell me, because I've had a minute in my hand, and they tell me, I said, oh, no, I can't wear that. She let me have another one. Well, we don't have anything. We got to have something. Or else I'm just going to walk out smelling like a uh, uh, degree. <laughs> right, God, you know. <laughs> Hey Amen. Was that strong enough for a man, but made for a woman? Who is that? Secret? I ain't wearing no secret. It might work, but it's, it's not. No. Now, if I was if I was in a situation secret or nothing, I got a secret up to do. <laughs> Amen. Do you get my point? There is a resemblance in the family of God, a consistency. And what the enemy is trying to do is bringing all kinds of things and, uh, and try to uh, pretend that saints don't have a look, that the family of God is not to be distinguished, that you can't rec look at a believer and recognize that that person is a believer. Well, Jesus says, I know how you can, I know how you can. Blessed the peacemakers, for they shall be recognized. They shall be called the children of God. I want to pray today. I want to pray for those who want prayer, but I want to pray for those who says, preacher, I want to be recognized. as a child of God. I want to be recognized by the world. I want to be recognized by my family. I want to be recognized. I want to present myself in such a manner that it will be obvious to all who see me that I belong to Jesus Christ. I want my brothers and sisters to see that I am a child of God. I want the recognition. Praise the Lord. I want the world to know when they see me under stress, I want them to know I'm one of them. I'm a child of the King. I want them to know if this is you, come to the altar. I want to pray for you. I want to see Jesus in me. Glory to God. The world wants me to blend in and it's tempting. It's certainly much easier but I want them to see that I'm a child of the King. Glory to God. I want to be distinguished. Help me to spread your peace. Help me to be you of heart, merciful, poor of spirit, hungry for righteousness. Help me, Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord Jesus, to be a peacemaker. Glory to God. Glory to God. I want to be like, the, like Peter was, but I want to respond differently. When they say, yeah, you're one of them, you tell them, yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm, I'm the Lord's child. I'm the Lord's son. I'm the Lord's daughter. I want who and what he has in store for me. I want to grow. People are still coming. I've been stagnant. Now I want to show fruits of growth. Growth. Everybody wants growth. People want growth in their standard of living. Growth. You know, if, you, if your child is the same height, same weight a year later than they were, they were a year before, you're concerned. Something is wrong. You got to grow. You got to grow. 
We're getting ready to pray. People are yet coming. Oh, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I want them to see Christ in me. I want them to see Christ in me. I want to be called a child of God. I want the family resemblance. I've met people before and I've said to them, you look like a saint. Yeah, you look like, uh, you look like you're in, the, you look like you're in holiness. You look like you're in, in Christ. Amen. And the look of holiness is not always, when I say you look like you, you look like you're in holiness, I'm not always talking about clothing. But that joy, the eyes, how they talk about the Lord. Holiness people get excited talking about the Lord. So you claim to be sanctified, you have no excitement talking about the Lord. You haven't been sanctified yet. And if you talk to us long enough, we'll speak in tongues. Coach, I have spoken in tongues. I'm in, a, I'm in a company of people that don't do that. Oh, check out our bus. I know what they were thinking. He's one of them. Washed in the blood of the Lamb. Father, lift your hands to him and begin to worship. Just, just begin to worship on the altar. Oh God, oh Jesus, 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 Jesus. Oh, just begin to worship. Just begin to worship. Jesus, you know, Jesus, I want this, Lord. I want this. I want to be recognized as your child. Whether I'm in the day, whether I'm in the night, wherever, oh woman, be made whole. In the name of Jesus, glory, glory, glory. Glory, 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 glory. Heal, heal, heal. Be made whole. Jesus, restore and revive. Revive and restore. Restore and revive. Revive and restore. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, God, we pray for that family resemblance. We pray for the family resemblance. Pray that you set our souls on fire. In the name of Jesus, set us on fire, Lord. Let us live where the world will see that we're saved. In the name of Jesus, let us conduct ourselves in such a manner where the world will know that we've been born again in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we're sorry and we give up everything that's not like you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we come out of everything that you don't want us in. In the name of Jesus, because we're glad to be in your family and we don't want to bring shame on the name of Jesus but we want people to see us and to see you in us and to be attracted to you based on what they've seen in us. In the name of Jesus, Jesus give us to walk it, give us to talk it. In the name of Jesus, give us to live holy and to celebrate Jesus everywhere we go. I rebuke the spirit the spirit of carnality. I rebuke the spirit. We rebuke flesh. We rebuke flesh right now. God make us spiritual. God make us spiritual. Pull us in beyond the veil. Pull us in to the holy of holies in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, Lord Jesus. We want to be spiritual. We want you to feel us once again with the Holy Ghost. Somebody cry out to him. Let your power fall on us. Let your anointing fall on us. Let your healing fall on us. Let your deliverance be evident in us. Let your power, let your power 
Let your power, hallelujah, be manifested in our lives. Give us strength to climb higher. Give us strength to move forward. Give us strength to be real. Give us strength, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Give us strength to be peacemakers. Give us strength to bear the family resemblance. The longer we stay saved, the more we ought to look like you. The more we want to talk like you. The more we want to overcome. The more we want the joy. The more we want the power. Jesus, let us grow, but grow stronger, not weaker. Get better, not worse. Get on fire, not cool off. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Help us, Lord, to grow in grace, to grow in grace. I'm outgrowing this. I'm outgrowing this. I'm outgrowing this. I've been stuck too long. I'm outgrowing this in the name of Jesus. Jesus, bless this young lady. Bless her to grow and grow and grow. Somebody ought to ask God, help me to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. The devil is a liar. I won't grow weaker. I'll only grow stronger. I won't decrease. I will increase. Jesus, Jesus, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving out. I'm not giving in. Jesus, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm coming up. I want to be the man that you'd have me to be. I want to be the woman that you'd have me to be. Jesus, do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it in me, Jesus. Heal this woman. Make a whole. Make whole. Revive, Lord. Jesus, yes, Lord. Saints, help me pray. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Good God Almighty, I'm growing in grace. I'm growing in grace. I'm growing in grace. I'm growing in this thing. I'm not going to backslide. I'm not turning away. Jesus, I'm laying aside every weight, every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. And I'm running with patience the race that is set before us. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of my faith. Yes, Lord. Woo! Glory! Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest. Glory. Keep me, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. I'm laying aside everything. Everything that's not like you. I'm laying it aside because I want this. I want to be in the family. I want to make Jesus look good. I want to be real. Yeah. Yes. Woo. Oh, let's praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise him like a hole in this church. Praise him like a hole in this church. Praise him like a hole in this church. Praise him like a 
knock a hole in his church. Uh, yeah. We lift our hands. We raise our voices. Not a shame. Not a shame. I'm not a shame. Oh, I'm not a shame. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, somebody needs the Holy Ghost. You can't, you can't do this on your own. Ah, uh, they that are of the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. That is, they set their mind, their attention, their heart, their spirit on fleshly things. That's what they like. But they that are of the spirit do mind the things of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spiritual things matter to you. Where I stand in God matters to me. Dad, Bishop Buller sung a song, says, the voice of God went walking in the garden. The voice. And he went to the normal meeting place. And Elder Burrell wasn't nobody there. And God, through human terms, didn't know where they were because he went to the normal place and wasn't nobody there. So God began to call. Adam, where are thou? Where are you in Christ? Where are you? God wants to know God wants to know oh, oh, where are you in Christ? Adam, where art thou? He said this. Where are you in Christ? Oh, oh Lord, where are you? Yeah. 